Hi, Math43. Let's look at vaccine efficacy as we do homework um, 5A, number 7. So we've been hearing this word everywhere lately. So we're going to look at the Johnson & Johnson trial only in the U.S. Um, so efficacy will vary from country to country or worldwide because there's different strains, so it might be, um, it just is different. So we're going to look at the Johnson & Johnson trial in the U.S. And it told us that 63 per 5,000 in the placebo group contracted COVID, and then 18 per 5,000 in the vaccinated group. Um, so it's per 5,000. Um, if you look really closely at this note at the bottom, it says the numbers are rounded. So it was actually out of more. Um, they just kind of found the average per 5,000 because then visually we can see it a little bit better. But let's check out the assignment. So I turned it into a two-way table. So we had 63 in the placebo group catch COVID. So that's the overlap for placebo and COVID out of 5,000 total in the placebo group. And then we had 18 out of 5,000. So 18 had COVID and the vaccine. So that's the overlap. And then again, out of 5,000. So let's find the risk. And then I'm gonna go a little bit farther than the homework to teach you what efficacy is. So what's the risk of catching COVID if you're in the placebo group? So risk and probability are the same thing. Risk is just something on the more negative side. So we'll do COVID given the placebo. So we're only going to look at the placebo part of the table. No one else. So 63 out of 5,000 contracted COVID. So that tells us um, 0.0126 or 1.26% caught COVID. And this is all, um, this, is, this could be mild, this could be severe, this could be hospitalized. Um, you'll notice when you read these articles, they'll have a different efficacy depending on severity. So this is just overall. Um, but if you go deeper into the article, severe cases efficacy changes. So a different amount of people got severe cases. So we're just looking at cases overall this time, but that's why there's different efficacies. Um, and so the vaccine group, the probability of COVID in the vaccine group, so given the vaccine, same idea, we'll look at everyone with the vaccine and then how many caught COVID. So 18 out of 5,000. So we get 0 0.0036, which is less than a percent. It's only 0.36%. So does it appear that the vaccine decreases the risk? Yeah, because it's smaller. So 1.26 decreases to only 0.36%. And this is going to lead into what efficacy is. So efficacy doesn't mean like 72% don't get COVID. I mean, maybe that's what... It kind of sounds like, but it's a little bit different. It's measuring um, the risk and how much the risk changes. So we're going to compare the risk with the vaccine and the risk without the vaccine. Um, it's called maybe like a reduction of risk. So what we're going to do for efficacy, we're going to find the difference in risk. So we're going to do risk of the placebo group minus risk of the vaccinated people. So that tells us the difference. And then we're just gonna compare it overall to the placebo. So we'll divide by the placebo again. And that's it, it's not that crazy of a formula, but it's telling us our reduction in risk. So we have the difference basically divided by placebo group. And so we get that 1.26 was our risk with the placebo minus the 0.36 was our risk vaccinated and then just divide by 1.26. So we'll do 1.26 minus 0.36. That's telling us the difference, which is 0.9 and then divide by 1.26. And so the efficacy is 714, so 71.4. Again, I said the numbers were rounded, so they were actually saying it was 72%. 
Um, and so that's probably just because they had rounded these numbers a little bit. But that's how they calculate efficacy. So now when you see that for other vaccines, um, you can check that out. So this is efficacy only for COVID overall. So if you wanted to look back at that article, um, efficacy changes. Um, so if we look at severe cases, let's actually calculate this one. So we have nine out of 5,000. And then we have one out of 5,000 with the vaccine. So let's see how they calculated um, severe cases. And this one's really more important, right? Because if everyone's getting mild cases, then maybe it's not as big of a deal, right? We're trying to keep people out of the hospital. So let's look at the severe cases. So the probability of severe COVID given the, uh, given the placebo, we'll do that first. And then we'll do probability of severe COVID given the vaccine. So it's not in a two-way table, but it is the same information. So it'll be nine out of 5,000 for the placebo that's on the left, and we have one out of 5,000 um, for the vaccine group. Only one person got severe COVID, so that's promising. So nine out of 5,000. So that means nine people in the placebo group got severe COVID and then only one out of 5,000 got severe COVID in the vaccine group. So nine out of 5,000 and then one out of 5,000. So these are definitely smaller. So 0 0.0018, which is 1.18%. And then 2e to the negative 4, um, might not remember, but it's 1, 2, 3, 4. So 1, 2, 3 zeros, and the 2 takes the last spot. Okay. So that's only 0.02%. And so then efficacy, same idea. So we'll just do the risk with the placebo minus risk of vaccinated. And then we'll just divide by the risk of the placebo. So how much is it reducing our risk? So it reduces by 0.16 and then we divide by 0.18. And we get 88. And again, remember I said the numbers were rounded, so it's not exactly matching. And that's just um, for simplicity of the article, they rounded the numbers. Um, if you look a little bit more closely, you can find more detailed numbers kind of hidden at the bottom of the article. So they make it out of 5,000 just to make the article easier to follow. But if you look really closely, um, there's actually, um, you can see the numbers. So 193 were infected with COVID and then 34 were severely infected. Um, and notice the total is a lot bigger, 19,544. So you could check that out again with um, the more detailed numbers. But oftentimes in articles, they'll round them to make the article easier to read. So hopefully this gives us a little bit of understanding of efficacy. If you're more interested in it, you can click on the article in the homework and read more about it.